Hi students! Today we are going to discuss about the practical applications of the different regions of the EMVs. By the way, I'm Ms. Karen, your science teacher. In your previous lesson, you have learned the comparison of the relative wavelengths of the different types of electromagnetic waves. In this lesson, it is now the time for you to learn about the different applications of each electromagnetic waves which are essential in our daily living. This will make you value more the concepts behind why things work. As a review, we have the different types of electromagnetic waves. We have the radio waves, infrared rays, ultraviolet rays, microwaves, visible light, x-rays, and gamma rays. Do you wonder how we can watch our favorite noontime show or news in our television? Or how we can tune in with our preferred FM radio station? Well, thanks to the radio wave, in our previous lesson, you had learned that radio waves have the longest wavelength among the EM waves and has the fewest frequency and energy at the same time. Therefore, it is used to transmit signals in radio communication and broadcasting. How does it work? Look and examine this picture. It shows the flow of how signals are produced and transmitted through radio waves. The first part is when the broadcaster uses a microphone. The microphone converts the sound waves to audio frequency signals or electrical signals and act as a receptor. The audio frequency or the AF signals will now go to a modulator. At the same time, the radio frequency oscillator will produce radio frequency carrier and will also go to the modulator. Once the AF signal and frequency carrier waves reach the modulator, those two will be transformed into an appropriate modulated carrier waves. Through the process of amplitude modulation, or frequency modulation. In amplitude modulation, the amplitude of the radio waves or the RF carrier changes to match that of the audio frequency signal. This is used in standard broadcasting because it can be sent over long distances. Very high frequency waves provide a higher quality broadcasting including stereo sound. In this process, instead of the amplitude of the RF carrier, it is the frequency of the waves that changes to match that of the signal. This is called the frequency modulation. After the modulation process, the modulated carrier wave will be sent to an amplifier that will magnify its energy. The amplified modulated carrier wave is then sent to the transmitting antenna. The changing current in the antenna generates radio waves that travel in all directions. The ionosphere helps the radio waves to bounce back radio waves and will be accepted by receiving antenna. Next we have the microwaves. Microwaves have higher frequencies compared to radio waves that made it to be used in satellite communication. As you can see in the figure, a grand Equipment is used to transmit signals to a satellite that will amplify that signal and will return it to the Earth to be received by another ground equipment. Unlike radio waves, microwaves are used to transmit signals overseas. This is the reason why we can communicate to our friends and relatives living in the other parts of the world. Another application of the microwave is radar. Radar or radio detection and ranging. It is used to locate, track, recognize, or detect objects within a range. It emits microwaves until it reaches the target and echoes will be produced from the target and will bounce back to the radar antenna. It is commonly used in the national defense by tracking aircrafts and ships from other countries that may trespass and cause threat. But did you know that it is also used by our vehicles? Radar is also used to determine the velocity of automotive vehicles. The mobile phone works by transmitting microwaves which are received by cell sites and delivered to a target mobile phone. The towers are connected through a wire-based system 
which work together to deliver calls and messages. Microwave oven is, cook, is used to cook or heat food. How? When you turn on the microwave and started to set it, the water molecules of the food inside start to vibrate through microwaves, causing the production of intermolecular friction between the molecules of the food. As a result, heat is produced that will make the food to be cooked. Another one is the infrared rays. The following are some useful applications of the IR radiation. We have infrared photographs. The infrared photographs taken from a satellite with special films provide useful details of the vegetation on the Earth's surface. We also have the infrared scanners. Infrared scanners are used to show the temperature variation of the body. This can be used for medical diagnosis. We also have the infrared remote controls. They are used in TVs, video, cassette recorders, and other electronic appliances. There are also some night vision goggles that using infrared rays. We also have autofocus cameras that have transmitter that send out infrared pulses. The pulses are reflected by the object to be photographed back to the camera. The distance of the object is calculated by the time lag between the sending and receiving of pulses. The lens is then driven by a built-in motor to adjust to get the correct focus of the object. Next, we have the visible light. Phototherapy is the use of light in medical treatment of a variety of illness, from topical infections and chronic wounds to autoimmune and chronic degenerative diseases. As Jukuka S. Nwemeka, the Dean of the University of the Wisconsin-Milwaukee College of Health Sciences, he is a well-known specialist who is conducting studies about phototherapy, which is an emerging field of medicine today. His team focuses on wavelengths of light that lie in two regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The longer wavelengths in the far red to near infrared region and shorter wavelengths in the visible blue region of the spectrum. According to them, studies have shown that true red to near infrared light covers wavelengths of about 600 to 1,100 nanometers. The 670 nanometers and 830 nanometers wavelengths are the most beneficial of the near infrared spectrum. Because light in this wavelength can penetrate the skin and be absorbed by subcutaneous cells. It can act on wounds, internal injuries, and diseases. Fiber optics or optical fibers are long, thin strands about the diameter of a human hair grown class. These strands are arranged in bundles called optical cables, which are used in communication. These transmit data by light to a receiving end where the light signal is decoded as data. Therefore, the fiber optics is a transmission medium, or a pipe, to carry signals over long distances at very high speeds. Formerly, it was used by doctors to see the patient's inside body without conducting a needle surgery. Nowadays, it is also widely used in communication, for it is cheaper compared to silver and copper and can transmit signal as fast as the speed of light. Another Another one is the ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet rays are best known to come from the sun, and many are afraid of it. But did you know that it's needed by our skin? It helps our body to produce vitamin D, which is essential in our body's calcium absorption. But too much exposure to UV rays will make our skin to accelerate in aging or worse, it may lead to skin cancer. Aside from the sun, there are also artificial sources of UV light. We have UV lamps which are used in checking signature on Facebook. Through this, one can determine fake banknotes as well as fake money bills. Ultraviolet radiation is also used in sterilizing water from drinking fountains. It is also used in our water filters being attached on the faucets. 
Some washing powder are also contains fluorescent chemicals which glow in sunlight. This makes your shirts look whiter than white in daylight. In Japan, UV rays are also used to disinfect their toilets. Another one is the X-rays. Long, long wave blank x-rays can penetrate the flesh but not the bones. They are used in x-ray photography to help doctors look inside the body. They are useful in the diagnosing bone fractures and tumors. On the other hand, short wave length x-rays can penetrate even through metals. They are used in industry to inspect welded joints for faults. All x-rays are dangerous because they can damage healthy living cells of the body. This is the reason why frequent exposure to x-rays should be avoided. Too much exposure to x-rays can damage body tissues and can cause skin cancer or cancer. Can you identify what body parts are shown in the following x-rays? And for the last one, we have the gamma rays. Gamma rays are so strong that they can kill living cells. That is why they are used to treat cancer with a process called radiotherapy. They are also used for sterilization of drinking water. Now, it's time for you to answer your journey test one. For your learning task 1, match the equipment in column A with its proper function in column B. Next, let us have your learning task 2. Using the words below, complete the flowchart showing the processes of radio broadcasting and communication. For learning task 3, choose one of the applications of the microwaves and make a short comic strip on how it uses microwaves to do certain functions, make, make use of available resources in your end. Learning Task 4 Classify in which type of electromagnetic wave corresponds with the following applications. Write it down in the correct column in the table. Okay, so that's it. For your post-test, you have to answer the following questions. Which of the following is the correct application of radio waves? Second, which band of frequency is suitable for communication over great distances? Third, all of these are use of microwaves except. Fourth, what vibrates inside the food to make friction? And last question, which of the following is considered as the application of infrared waves?
Okay, so that will be all for the day. Good job, everyone. Have a nice day.